Good morning. I'm David Wu. I'm Xin Tian. And today, we'll be presenting our project entitled Exosomes Derived from Mesenchymal Stromal Cells Promote Axonal Growth. A neuron is a nerve cell that consists of a cell body, branching dendrites, and an axon. Axons are the long nerve fibers that form the backbone of neuroconnectivity. Damage to these axons has been implicated in many serious neurological disorders like stroke and multiple sclerosis. Many of these diseases have severe symptoms and yet no cure. Axon remodeling has been shown to play a crucial role in repairing the brain after injury to develop an effective therapy strategy to promote axonal growth would be clinically significant. Today, we are going to introduce a new approach using exosomes to enhance axonal growth. Exosomes are 40 to 100 nanometer small vesicles that play a critical role in cell-to-cell -cell communication and many other processes. They do so by delivering biological materials, including microRNAs. The exosomes we looked at were isolated from mesenchymal stromal cells, or MSCs. We chose these because our lab has shown that MSC-derived exosomes can promote central nervous system plasticity as well as neurological recovery. Currently, however, very little is known about the effects of MSC-derived exosomes and their cargo on axonal growth. Based on previous studies, we hypothesized that MSC-derived exosomes contain microRNAs to promote axonal growth. We also hypothesized that tailored exosomes with elevation of the microRNA 1792 cluster further enhance axonal growth. The materials we used in our study included neurons for axonal growth studies, MSCs that were either untreated or manipulated, and exosomes we derived from MSC growth medium. The methods that we used included immunofluorescent staining, for phosphorylated high molecular weight neurofilament, or PNFH, an axonal marker, real-time polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR, to look at microRNA levels, and Western <coughs> blot analysis to analyze protein expression. A key device we used in our study is the microfluidic chamber. This is a widely accepted device used to separate the soma cell bodies from the axons, allowing for compartmentalized treatment. Number one shows a soma compartment where we cultured embryonic cortical neurons. Number two shows the 450 micrometer long micro grooves in between the two chambers. And number three shows the axonal compartment. A pressure gradient caused by different amounts of medium on both sides of the platform combined with the length of the micro grooves ensured that only axons were able to grow from the soma compartment into the axonal chamber. This is how we were able to specifically treat and observe pure axons without contamination from cell bodies or dendrites. In our experiment, we first cultured MSCs. From these, we either isolated exosomes or manipulated the cells with various RNAs. We then added these exosomes to either the axon or soma compartments. We treated the somata in order to assess the indirect effects exosomes played on axonal growth. Likewise, we treated the axons in order to assess the direct effects. All of our treatments were performed within the microfluidic chambers. To assess the effects of MSC-derived exosomes on axonal growth, we treated the somas of neurons with either MSC-derived exosomes or PBS as a control. We then stained the axons for PNFH, and the green area represents axons. As you can see, exosome treatment increased axonal growth when compared to the control. The quantification of this data shows that this difference was significant. In addition, we treated neuronal axons with two different concentrations of MSC-derived exosomes, and the quantification of this data shows that the higher dose of exosomes increased axonal growth when compared to the control, which was significant. These data suggest that MSC-derived exosomes promote axonal growth. Since we saw that MSC-derived exosomes promote axonal growth, we asked what biomolecules in exosomes could promote axonal growth. We focused on microRNAs for two reasons. First, microRNAs are found in exosomes, and second, microRNAs have been implemented in the regulation of many cell processes. So, what are microRNAs? 
microRNAs are around 22 nucleotide short RNA molecules that regulate gene expression. As you can see, they're synthesized in the nucleus, exported into the cytoplasm, where they undergo some modifications. Finally, they're incorporated into the RNA-induced silencing complex, or RIS, by the Argo family of proteins. There, they can either promote translational repression or mRNA cleavage, which leads to changes in downstream proteins. I'd like to emphasize that Argonaut 2, or Argo 2, is a key component of microRNA function. Well, since we know that Argonaut 2 plays such an important role in microRNA function, we wanted to assess the role that microRNAs themselves play in exosome-enhanced axonal growth. We did so by knocking down Argonaut 2 in MSCs. Neurons were treated with either PBS, exosomes from MSCs that received control, small interfering RNA, or exosomes from MSCs that received the Argonaut 2 knockdown. As shown here, the control siRNA exosomes had increased axonal growth when compared to the control. But Neurons treated with attenuated Argonaut 2 exosomes abolished this growth. The quantification of our data show that this <coughs> abolishment was significant, suggesting that microRNAs could play a prominent role in exosome-enhanced axonal growth. Because we now saw that knocking down Argonaut 2 subsequently abolished exosome-mediated axonal growth, we went ahead and assessed the effects of an elevation of a functional microRNA group in exosomes on axonal growth. We selected the microRNA1792 cluster because this unit has been shown to promote axonal growth. I'm sorry. As a proof of principle study, we transfected MSCs with a vector containing the 1792 cluster while transfecting others with an empty vector. RT-PCR results showed us that in the exosomes, all six individual microRNAs of the 1792 cluster were significantly elevated, proving that MSCs can transfer these increased microRNAs into the respective exosomes. Now, since we saw the elevation of the microRNA 1792 cluster in MSCs can transfer over to their exosomes, we asked whether this elevation of the microRNA1792 cluster in exosomes could affect axonal growth. To this end, we treated neurons with either PBS, control exosomes, or microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes. As you can see, control exosomes promoted axonal growth when compared to the control. Interestingly, <laughs> microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes further enhanced this promotion of axonal growth. The quantification of our data shows that these differences were significant, suggesting that the elevation of the microRNA1792 cluster in exosomes can further enhance the exosomal mediated promotion of axonal growth. And since we saw that the elevation of the microRNA1792 cluster in exosomes could further enhance axonal growth, we asked whether these exosomes could deliver their microRNA cargos into the neurons. RT-PCR analysis was performed on RNAs harvested from both the axonal and somal compartments of the microfluidic chambers. As you can see, in the axons, four members of the microRNA1792 cluster are significantly increased, and in the somata, all six members of the microRNA1792 cluster are significantly increased in neurons treated with microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes as compared to the control suggesting that indeed microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes can deliver their microRNA cargos into the neurons. Now since we saw that microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes could deliver their microRNA cargos into the neurons, we asked whether these delivered microRNAs were functional in the neurons. It is well established that the microRNA1792 cluster targets P10. P10 can negatively regulate mTOR, which affects GSK3 beta to go on to regulate axonal growth. We first looked at P10 expression in neurons treated with PBS, control exosomes, or microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes. As you can see, control exosome treatment decreased P10 expression compared to the control. Importantly, microRNA1792 cluster elevated exosomes further decreased P10 expression to almost undetectable levels. 
And since P10 negatively regulates mTOR, a decrease in P10 expression leads to an increase in phosphorylated mTOR and subsequently GSK3 beta to go on to promote axonal growth. To conclude, our study has shown for the first time that first of all, <coughs> MSC-derived exosomes can promote axonal growth. Second, by attenuation of microRNA machinery protein, argonaut 2 in exosomes, we found that microRNAs mediate this exosome-enhanced axonal growth. Third, we generated exosomes with an elevation of the microRNA 1792 cluster and saw that the individual microRNAs were transferred into the neurons by the engineered exosomes. From there, the cluster activated a signaling pathway, which contributed to the overall axonal growth. Finally, our data suggests, therefore, that by modulating the microRNA content, exosomes can potentially be used as therapeutic vehicles in the treatment of many axonal degenerative neurological disorders, such as multiple sclerosis and traumatic brain injury. In future experiments, we would like to determine the effects of MSC-derived exosomes with an elevation of microRNA 1792 on axonal regeneration in animal models of stroke and trauma. We would also like to dive deeper and understand the mechanisms of exactly how exosomes enter into the axons and somata, which will provide us with new insights into targeting specific cell populations. Finally, we would like to thank our mentors, our parents, the Siemens Foundation, Discovery Education, and the George Washington University. Thank you all for your attention.